Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Novus Beard Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today I'm gonna show you guys how to manage all your Docker containers through one console. So let's get started. So I'm guessing we are right about that time where you are running maybe one or two Pi hosted servers or one or two Dockers or possibly even three like I am. Actually, I'm running about four by now. And it is kind of annoying to have to log into each portainer through the web console just so you can add or remove a container or manage it. But there is a way where you can actually use one central console to manage all your other portainers or all your other dockers. And this is the method that I use just so I have one location to um, see and manage and control or delete or remove anything that I want to from all these other Pi hosted servers that I'm running. So to begin, we are gonna be using Portainer Agent. Obviously, if you've been following the series of Pi Hosted, we are using Portainer as the main host. And what the Portainer Agent does is just allows for that unit or the other Raspberry Pi or the other PC to connect to your main Portainer. This way you don't have to log into multiple locations. So here on my desktop, I actually have a link to Portainer document on how to install the Docker Agent. There's actually quite a few versions available. There's the CE11, uh, you go through the 215 main, CE 2.9, whatever you want is fine. I actually started using the 2.9, even though my version is 2.15, but it still works. If I was to change this over to 2.15, it will still bring you over to the main thing. So you, this would just be changed to the latest version. So I'll leave a link down in the description below. Now you guys are probably used to this screen where you would see your, all your containers hooked up, the images and all that stuff. This is the Raspberry Pi hosted, my main server, which has four cores and eight gigs of RAM. And obviously if you go into the list, you will display all the stuff that you have installed. So the first thing we need to do is actually jump into our device that we want to be able to manage. All right, so I'm going to SSH into our Docker tower, which is the thing that I put together a couple of weeks ago. So we're gonna do SSH pi at docker tower. And we are here. And this actually has a few libraries because we got the screen display and we got some other stuff going on over here. So if I do docker container ls, it should show I have up, uh, yep, three containers. Now the reason why I'm showing you that we could do it through terminal instead of just going through the portainer to install the agent is because you actually don't need the physical portainer uh, installed. You just need the agent. Now, apparently this one's already installed. And what I did was actually just copy and paste this command. I didn't even change anything. I just left this like this and I'll show you. Actually, uh, since this is running 2.9, I could probably do Docker uh, stop portainer agent. Okay, I'm gonna stop that. Did I spell it wrong? I did. And then I'm gonna do docker rm portainer agent. So I'm gonna remove that. And then I'm gonna paste that new one, which is agent with the latest. And in this one, it should download a new image. And instead of running 2.9.3, it will be running 2.15. Now keep in mind what the IP is on your device. And I could do AP IDDR. This will list the IP address of this current device, which should be 224, I believe, 214, sorry. And now that everything is installed, all you have to do is just head over to your main portainer, head over to home. Uh, actually you could go over to environments. And in the environments, this is where you would add the environment and then you would add the Docker, start wizard. Now there's a few ways to add it. You could use agent, API, socket, edge. I actually had API uh, enabled on one of the devices and you could use the API without having to use the full agent. I just you know, find it a lot easier to run the agent, but you don't have to, you could actually use the API. Um, from here, what I would do is name this Docker tower. And then the environment would be the IP address of the current device, 214, right? And it's 9001, which is the port, and hit connect. Now on the top right, it says environment created. And now I could actually just close out of this. And if I go into home, you should see that it's up. Now, 
my CADAS, which was connected before, is off, so it's going to obviously show down. But this is how it would look like if it, something is down. But I have my Docker tower up. If I hit that, go to my containers, now you can see my OLED stats, the pixel server is up, and then the Portainer agent. And there is no actual Portainer host in here. If you do have the Portainer host, you could actually remove it. But on the same side, you could still add app templates in here. So since I'm selected on the Dock Tower, you could see this on the top left over here. I could basically add anything I want. So if I wanted to add, say, uh, what is something easy? File, file server, okay? I could just add file. I thought it would have been easy. Uh, here, file browser, click on that, and then all I have to do is just deploy the container, just like you would be using if you're logged into that portainer. Now you just have multiple servers in one location. This way I don't have to log into multiple locations. And also I don't have to generate passwords, username, stuff like that. So it's a little bit easier just to run the portainer agent. Again, now that I'm back at the Docker Tower, you can see that four of them is running. And if I hit that, oh, you know what? I forgot to set the environment. So if you're going to do that, you could also set up the environment over here. Go back to your Docker tower and the actual IP address, which is probably the same thing as 214. Or you can actually just use Docker tower if you got your DNS all sorted out. So I'm going to go back to Docker tower here, dashboard, container. And then now if I click on this, it should open my file browser. And I think the default is admin admin. Yeah. And now I'm able to look inside that. And it was just a matter of clicking or logging in and clicking onto everything. Now, the only downside to running it this way, there is a huge downside actually. I have my local one, which is my Pi hosted main server. I have Kados, I have a Zima board, which is x86. And then I have a Docker tower. Now, if I go into the Docker tower and run my app templates, you could see this is made for 64 bit AM, ARM64. Now it's fine and dandy because my other servers like the local and the CADAS are ARM64, but my Zima is actually AMD64 or x86. So the problem is if I click on here and I run app template, it will still pull the environments or the, uh, the settings uh, this template, the ARM64 template, and it will not pull the AMD64 version where that's where I run into a problem because I can't install anything onto this board, the Zima board, because of the different architects. So you gotta keep them in mind if you are running multiple different or you're trying to connect everything to one container, one host, make sure that they are all in the same um, architecture because you won't be able to do what I'm stuck basically doing here. I won't be able to actually add AMD64 template to make it work with this. So that is it guys. That is something I just wanted to show you because you guys should be at the point where you are running multiple uh, hosts or multiple dockers already. So this is just one way of managing and controlling everything all together. Anyway, if you guys have any questions about this, hit me up down in the comments below. If you wanted me to make a video just on using the API, let me know down in the comments below as well. Or you can hit me up on my Discord. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say, my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.